Hi everybody and big welcome to CDHTV gameplay. Me and Pontus joined by a storytelling reader. Hi Samurai. Hi Mont. Uh, crazy story, dude. Like I was like walking and this dude just started handing out rings. Like me and eight other people got them. No, not cool. Um, uh, you're gonna turn into something bad. Uh, not bad. Not good. Not good. I'll be fine. You should read the book to know what happens. <laughs> so I'm playing Raktos Magar of the Strings. I have played it a few times and I've never won with it. I made a video explaining why he is bad. I I really like him and I just want to win a game. It's a very fun and cool gimmick uh, effect, so to say. And you should never give up. That's what I believe. Like, figure out how to solve things and figure out how to make him better. But he is basically a Commander that reanimates your instant sorceries into creatures that attack and cast spells when they connect to face. What could go wrong? A lot of things usually go wrong. So I'm playing Max of Sea Cane. This is pretty much a deck that I top four play Max with. Deck trying to use X spells to get a combo out as quick, fairly quickly, or it can move into a more of a slower game plan if need. I am playing my bestest bud, Sauron the Dark Lord. We're gonna do some typical Grixis shenanigans. I'm also running, there's this random little halfling that keeps showing up to our parties, so I decided to run them. Stuff keeps going missing, but I, I'll, I'll ask him about it next time. Recently, there's been a lot of talk about Tyam in CDH, so I decided to try out the deck, and this is just the top results deck of EDH Top 16, so I'm gonna try it out. Let's look at some opening hands. So this hand, I'm the starting player, it's a little bit too slow, we like, we have a turn 2 Felwar Stone and a turn 3 Commander. We can do a lot better, so we're gonna mulligan. I'm not so happy with this hand either, like we're lacking speed, we have a Cabal Ritual, but we don't really have anything to... We have a Peer into the Abyss to Cabal Ritual into, we don't... It, Cabal Ritual is not enough to get Peer to resolve. And we don't have like any form of fast mana, any form of rocks, so we're gonna mulligan again, going down to 6. This hand is lacking a lot of stuff. However, we have a turn one Ranger Dragon Raid Chandler, and then we have a few spells to fuel that, to filter through our deck and make sure we're getting good top decks. But also we're gonna fuel our graveyard with cards that we can reanimate into creatures. So I'm gonna go with this hand. I think I'm gonna bottom the red elemental blast to the bottom of the library, because I don't think I need to. So, I like this hand. Uh, I don't actually like this hand, but it's a hand that's gonna work, and I, I don't really wanna go lower. You should be very cautious about how hard you're gonna mulligan. You should be brave mulliganing, but don't mulligan like too aggressively. Like, this is a hand that's going to work out because of the Dragon Rage Channeler. So, we're gonna stay here and be safe. Let's take a look at what uh, Jason is able to find. Way too many lands in this hand. Like, it has Tabor Saber here than Pongify, but. Other than that, it does absolutely nothing. I'm going to t go to my second seven. This hand, I think I'm going to keep because Ragman's a really good turn one play. I have an X Tutor to work with Magus. I have Ramp in terms of Bloom Tender and Dockside. And Vecna Susha can make so my invasion is uncounterable. So I think I'm going to keep my second seven. I like this hand a lot. And I'm very excited to play Magus. As usual, with a No Lander, this hand looks really gas. <laughs> But it's a no-lander, so can't really keep it. Go to second side. So this looked decent. I'm gonna be real, I don't know what the initiative does. Uh, I need to read up on that. But the Voto Druid is like a key piece of the deck. It doesn't really win just by itself, but like there's a bunch of wins enabled by it. But this would be like a turn two the Voto Druid into a turn three Tyam into a turn four something. Now, we don't really have an acceleration except for the Water Druid. The turn with this is nice. Even is, even is pretty good. Water Adventure, I think, is just a value engine. So I think this hand is a bit too slow and too like dependent on other things going right. I could be wrong. Uh, this might be where my inexperience with the deck shows itself. But I'm gonna mulligan this. So let's see what we get on a six. So this hand. While kind of just being our last, like the second seven, with extra steps, uh, we have like finding Bayou, finding Crypt of a Vamp Tutor. I think it's actually better because we can actually like develop develop a lot of mana. We don't really have any stacks. I don't think we, we might need it. I don't think we're, we need to develop any early stacks in this pod. 
It's just Sauron that's pretty fast. I guess Mons, but I think Mons' stake is a bit awkward. So I think we could like get that extra turn needed. And this is a lot of mana, so I think this will actually be pretty good. So I'm going to keep this. Once again, I might be showing my experience, but I think this is fine. I mean, it looks good. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a good hand. Yeah, I, th I think we can keep this. Drawing a card for the turn. Playing a mountain. Tapping the mountain. Casting a Dragon's Rage Channeler. And then I pass the turn to Jason. I'm going to draw a card. I'm going to play, also play Mountain. I'm going to tap it. I'll play Ragavan. And then I'm going to pass the turn. Take my turn. Land for turn is, is this Wooded Foothills. And I will pass my turn. All right. Cast a Flooded Strand. We'll crack this. I'm assuming it's good. Uh, we'll go ahead, get an Underground Sea. Shuffle, play a Chromox, Exile, play a Soul Ring, and let's go ahead and move it up so that way we... I think I'm just going to leave up as a suspicious uh, 3 mana and pass. I'm going to untap and draw a card. Play this Tekunura Abandoned Mire. So I want to trigger my Dragon's Rage Chandler. I have an Inquisition of Kosalik in my hand and I really like the card because you get a sneak peek at what people are basically doing. Now, who do we target? So Pontus put a land into play then passed. Jason played Ragavan and passed, while the Sauron, Samurai, put a whole bunch of cards into play and passed. I can take someone's Dockside with this. I can't take an Adnos if Sauron actually has an Adnos in his hand. Sauron, the Samurai player, has the fewer cards in his hand. He's also last in turn order. I do have a Pyroblast against Jason, so I, which is only going to actually be... No, I can target... Uh, Sauron and things of the sort. Is that an Adnos from Sauron or is it something scary from Jason? Developing a, a Ragavan and passing turn isn't usually that scary. So I think I'm gonna target Sauron in the end with the Inquisition of Kosarek. It might be... I think that's the best target to try to figure out what he's up to. I'm gonna cast Inquisition of Kosalik targeting Sauron, the Saruman uh, samurai player. I'm just gonna tell you right now, don't be calling me Saruman. There's only one Lord of the Rings, and we do not share power. Yeah, take your Jewel Lotus. That's your only option. Yeah, yeah, take your Jewel Lotus. <laughs> I guess your game plan is to cast Commander and get your uh, Kossel, Saur, Rasakef into your graveyard. Trigger R Dragon Straight Chandler. Uh, considering what we need, we're gonna keep this on the top of the library, and then I'm passing the turn. Untap, draw a card. I'm going to play Flood Strand. I'm gonna pay life crack it. Gonna find a tropical island. I'm going to then pay two. Play as Bloom Tender, and then I think I'm gonna swing at Samurai with Ragavan for two. Chain of Vapor. Really ugly one. I'm not gonna cast the Chain of Vapor. And then I'm going to pass. Samurai kind of laid it on thick that he had an oppo, uh, but we got shown that that was not the case. So we're safe to fetch a lamp here. But sadly, we cannot find the mana to both vamp and cast an archon next turn. Because we can only fetch a green land, so it's green black or green white, and not white black. Which we'll... So in here we have the kind of the option of either fetching and vamping now. Uh, we could also just not vamp or fetch and hope we draw land next turn. I'm less inclined to do that because like the blowout potential is kind of high. It's kind of low reward. It would be a better state if we could just draw a second land. But since that's not guaranteed and the alternative is to just make the same play a turn later, I don't like that. I think this highlight might have been kind of keep. I just saw a bunch of mana and tie them and so I thought that's pretty good. Uh, but here we are now, and I think my line will still be to just find the crypts and develop a bloom, th bloom thunder, and hope for second land later. Otherwise, we can we do still have some things we can develop, but it's not that great. Oh yeah, we have to take this and bite the bullet a bit. So let's do that. In your end step, I'd like to fetch, finding a bayou, tapping bayou to cast a vamp. I will be finding this card and putting it on top. Move to my turn. On top and draw. I'd like to cast a mana crypt. Tap mana crypt, tap by you, cast a bloom thunder. Kind of doing it worse as well. Then I will pass turn. Man, this hand could have been better. <laughs> I'll play a Forbidden Orchard. Yeah, I won't play my commander. It takes a lot, someone. Not naming names. <laughs> and I will simply 
pass my turn. I guess that uh, Inquisition of Kostelik hit golden and will untap and draw a card. Uh, swamp. I'm tapping out for my awesome miniature boss. Then I'm attacking at uh, Pontus for one. No blocks, take one. And here I pass the turn. I'm going to untap, draw a card. I'm going to play a Rejuvenating Spring. I could either go for the Dock side, which will give me three treasures because of what Samurai and Pontus have. But I could also just try to jam this for win next turn with Vexing Shusher. And I think that is the better play in this. Cracking my treasure token and I'm going to play a Mag Magus Lucia Kane. I'm going to then move to combat. Magus will trigger. I'm going to give her a plus one plus one counter. And then I'm going to swing at... Yeah, I'll swing at Pontus for two with Ragavan. Uh, Samurai, do you want to kill the Ragavan? Okay. Well, you, you do. You have the land. Oh, I can. Actually, yeah, you know what? That sounds pretty cool. I like that, Pontus. Boom. Let's give you a land. Okay. I get a spirit. And I would like to block Ragavan with his spirits. It's fine. And then I'm going to pass yeah. turn. Um, I don't mind that he killed my Ragavan just because, like, I could still use Bloom Tender and Magus is still really good. I think I could still win next turn. Go to my turn. Untap Upkeep of Crypt. What's this damage? I rolled a 5 and a 6. That doesn't work. Roll for Crypt. Roll a 2. Uh, no damage. Draw for turn. Uh, yeah, so we got to draw the land, which is really nice. Uh, I think we were probably falling behind kind of fast if we didn't draw this land, so really helpful, really nice. So here we have the choice of either casting Ar Archon or casting our commander. And I think commander is actually the choice here. Uh, Mons is kind of scary. He does represent big spell to reanimate soon-ish, but I don't think it's this turn. I think we still have a turn. Samurai is representing four, six, seven... One mana off Rasaketh, but no creature in play, so that's not that scary. He has a Sauron next turn, so that's pretty good, and the Rasaketh after that, but we still get the turn in between to do, to put down the Archon, which makes it harder harder for him to like do anything. It's just Jason, and I think we have a turn there still. Not convinced that it's the right play, but I think it actually is, so I will develop my commander here. And for turn will be this Savannah. Then I'll tap four cast my time and then with time and play i'll pass the turn cast a mystical tutor i'm gonna pay two life i'm gonna mental mess step it definitely gonna be a toxic daily <laughs> yeah i was like i was definitely uh everybody was kind of on the chopping block there <laughs> apparently people like their commanders a city of traders so i'll give you the boy spirits are non-gendered at a red mana no it's blue blue mana black colorless colorless cast my boy it's technically an ephemeral being of light that has been corrupted. I pass my turn. I'm gonna start off by casting a Pyretic Ritual, triggering my Dragon's Rage Channelers. Surveil one, and giving an uh, increase to uh, the Orc army. I'm going to put this on. Now it can stay on top of my library, actually. I'm gonna use all of that free red mana to cast my Jeska's Will, targeting Pontus, because both Pontus and Jason has four cards in their hand, generating four red mana. Exiling one, two, three card. Dockside. Nice. Perfect. I'm going to play my Ancient Tomb as a land drop. This land will go to permanent exile. I'm going to use one red mana and cast a Pyroblast on Jason's commander Magus, trying to destroy her. She goes back to the command. I'm going to cast the Dockside, generating three treasures. I'm going to use my remaining two, two red mana to cast a Mind Stone from my hand. And then I'm going to attack Jason with my commander, free at the ground. I will take the three. And then I pass turn. I'm going to untap, draw a card. So I'm going to start by paying one. I'll play the Soaring. I'm going to pay two, cast a Dark Side. I'm going to respond by sacrificing my three treasures and activate my commander. I'm gonna make Jeska's will into a creature. So I'm gonna add three counters to it because now Jeska's will is a free free. And then still, in response to Dockside, I'm gonna sacrifice this Mind Stone tapping it to draw a card. There we go. Um, so I will create 
three treasures, two of it to cast a Vexing Tradition. And then I'm going to pass my turn. So I know that I could have easily recasted Magus this turn, just if I play the Vexing Tradition before I play the Dockside. The reason I went for this way is so this way next turn when I do cast my Magus, I'll have the ability to make her uncounterable. And I have two tutors now, one that can be done at instant speed and one that can be done at sorcery speed. So I have I have multiple ways to win. Untap upkeep from crypt, odds damage. Roll the one, take three. Draw for a turn. I will tap my bloom thunder for um Absal. I'll tap two lands and use the green floating to cast this Circle of Dream Druids, plant them with a Vigilance counter. Then I'll tap Mana Crypt and use my white floating, cast this Archon of Emeria. I'm going to move to combat and I'm going to attack uh, Pontus with an Orc. It's a 10 10. No blocks, take 10. That means the ring tempts my Orc army, making them legendary and allowing me. The power. So the first thing that happens is it becomes a legendary. And now it can no longer be blocked by creatures with greater power. It can only jump, which would be hard to not do. I'll be honest. And then because I have been tempted by the ring, I can draw, discard my hand and draw four cards from Sauron, the Dark Lord. Praise be employee benefits. Two, three. Hoo yeah. I'm going to tap to... And I'm just going to play an Arcane Signet, and that'll be my spell for this turn. I think I'm kind of happy about that Archon of Emir right now, so I'm going to untap and draw a card. I'm going to play this Bloodstained Mire and sacrifice it. I'm going to find this bad land. So we currently have land, artifact, instant and sorcery inside my graveyard, so my Dragon's Raid Channeler is a free free flying creature. So having Jeska's Will under a, as a creature with an Archon of Emir in play is kind of sad because I don't actually get to cast the things that I exile into with Jeska's Will. So I'm just exiling like cards from the top of my library, which is just ultimate boring. Jeska's Will connecting to someone's face isn't going to be that epic, sadly. But uh, I think it's a good thing we have uh, Archon of Emir in place still, though, for the, for the moment. So my spell for the turn is going to be Grim Hireling. One, two, three, four. And then I would like to go to combat. So my Jeska's Will is going to go at Pontus. My commander is going to go at Jason, and my flying Dragon's Rage Chandler is going to go at Sauron. Jason. Okay, I'm going to block with Darkseid. No blocks. No blocks at the moment. So I connected at two people. This means I'm going to generate four treasures. And here I'm going to pass the turn. I'm going to untap, draw a card. I'm going to play this Arid Mesa. I'm going to crack it, get a Taiga, and then I'm go going to... Play an Aaron Mesa because I play tap due to Arcanum area. I'm going to pay 3, 4, Florian Colas, cast Magus to see a game. I have no clue. I'm going to move the combat. She'll get a plus one, plus one counter. And then I'm going to pass my turn. Go to my turn. Untap, upkeep, roll for crypt, also damage. Roll the 2, no damage. Draw for a turn. Land for turn will be this Ancient Tomb. I would like to move to combat. I will swing Archon at Samurai. In my post combat main phase, I'd like to tap the green to cast a Avacyn's Pilgrim. I will enter with a Vigilance counter. I will then pass my turn. I will move to combat. Wow. I block with Avacyn's Pilgrim, but before damage, I will Circle of Dream Druids for five green. Use three of them to remove three counters from my permanents to activate Tyon. In response, I will mill three birds, flats, purple. I'll return a birds of paradise to my field. I'll gain a counter, and damage can happen. So you got a nice pilgrim there? I mean, we gotta play stuff, I guess. I'd like to cast a diabolic intent, sacrificing the wall. I'm gonna pass. So I just fetched out neck, uh, Mancy, because what I'm going to do, I'm gonna actually reanimate Razakath probably on the teamer player's turn i'm gonna wait for mons to play a spell so when i get an orc army and then what i'm gonna do is when teamer player plays a spell i'm gonna necromancy bring back razukath sacrifice the orc army then make another orc army and sacrifice that i'm gonna search out toxic deluge probably toxic deluge in underworld breach and then try to win 
and I'm gonna cast a. I'm not gonna cast. I'm gonna create a creature out of this pyroblast, so to say. So once your pyroblast is entered as a creature, I'm going to tap this for three, and then and convoke out a a court of calling, which will grab a Gilded Drake, and I will take your pyroblast creature, and you have a Gilded Drake. We can't destroy Archon of Fimeria because that is going to win the game for the scary scary Sauron I think. We can however, we, like we're growing an army here, so to say, more or less. So I think we're gonna try to use Grim Hireling to eventually just overpower these guys by just removing their creatures a little bit one by one. I think we need to try to kill both the this turn with my Grim Hiling and Tyam this turn. Like we're gaining a very huge army. E flyers and things. We need to really kill Pontus life total because it's gonna be hard to actually outvalue Pontus if he gets going. Eventually I will run out of instant sorceries to actually cast while he will just be able to use creature over and over forever. I think at this point he's already capable of doing that because he can just chunk block with his bird of paradise for like ever so to say. So that's going to be hard. But uh, so Grim Hiling have to kill Tyam. But the priority number one is uh, Jason's uh, combo creature. And then we will kill Archon of Emeria later. I'm going to play this Cabal uh, Pit as a land drop. Combat, Dragon Rage Chandler at Gilded Drake at Pontus. Jeskas Will at Jason. No blocks, take three. So I generate six treasures. I'm actually gonna cast Jeskas Will because I don't have to choose both modes. So I'm gonna generate four red mana. I'm gonna tap this black mana and sacrifice two treasures to give Jason's commander minus two, minus two. It is dead. I'm gonna tap this black mana again, uh, sacrifice three artifact treasures and do the same thing to Tyam, Pontus commander. Tyam is dead. I'm gonna tap this Cabal Pit and take a damage and make my Inquisition of Koslik into a creature. We're making an army. While we're at it, we might as well make Piretic Ritual into an army as a creature as well. So currently our grave contains, yes, Bloodstained Mire and Mindstone. So we can't make more army, but we have a pretty good army already. Here I pass the turn. I'm going to untap, I will draw a card. I'm going to fetch with my Arid Mesa, so Fountain Mountain. I'm going to play this Plaza of Heroes tapped. She now costs 8 mana. I'm going to pass my turn. Go to my turn. Untap, upkeep, roll of crit, alter damage. Roll a 6, no damage. I will tap 3 to cast this Might of the Reliquary. I have a trigger on the stack for Sauron to amass. I'd like to tap 1... Two, three, and cast a Necromancy. I pass on Necromancy. I also pass. I've cast my spell for turn. Razika, shuffle, pay two life, sacrifice a wall. Move it under here because I really don't. Research for it again. Uh, lose two life, get a token. Three to continue. It's a four, four, and I will pass my turn. I'd like to pay two life, shuffle, and Razakath will die. Tap and tap and pay. Let's go for life for Toxic Daily. No, my army. I have no response to this. My army is dead. So I will kill my entire board also. <sighs> Been wanting to do this for quite a few number of turns. I happen to still have three opponents. So we're going to play this training ground, sacrifice our uh, city of traders, float a colorless, cast an underworld breed. This could be problems for you guys. We've got a colorless floating crack, play a grinding station. Uh, we have an untapped trigger from the grinding station. I'll tap and sacrifice this lovely soul ring in response. Target myself. We'll go ahead and mill one, two, three cards. Oh, yes. Three cards to the grave. Tap one. I'm going to cast this mana vault. Now, I've got an infinite loop here. I have grinding station, mana vault. What this is, is a loop that allows me to mill three. When Mana Vault enters the battlefield, it will trigger Grinding Station to untap itself. Even if it's already untapped, it'll still have the trigger to untap. So with Mana Vaults, with the Grinding Station trigger on the stack, I'm going to tap Mana Vault to add three mana. Then I'm going to tap Grinding Station to sacrifice the Mana Vault and mill me three cards. Then we'll resolve the Grinding Station untap trigger. 
and then we're going to use Underworld Breach using that one mana, using one of the three mana we just generated to replay the Mana Vault. And I can basically keep doing this uh, until I search out the win con. I'm going to mill out until I hit Mox Opal. Then I'm going to generate a black and then I'm going to keep milling out until I hit Thassa's Oracle into the grave. And then I'm going to reanimate it, losing two life and winning the game. This was honestly the best game I've ever had with Magar of the Magic Strings. You could ask if I should have killed Archon of Amiri and tried to go for the win on my turn. I did cheat uh, during the... after he won. I took a look at the top cards of my library. I would not have won. So the end state would have been... I would have killed Archon and past turn and the uh, same thing would have happened. I've never had Magus killed that often in any game I've played. So that definitely made winning this game very hard, especially since like my, I do not want to use the invasion I had in my hand literally the entire game. We got kind of stuck on uh, the counters, which is kind of a choke point for Kayan. And we never really got into the grind state that we were after. So that's how it goes. Good game. So yeah, we basically worked the system, used our commander correctly, abused our orc army, you know, orc orc for the win. And we did pretty well. We even won. And you know, now I'm getting headhunted. There was this guy with a goatee asked me if I wanted to live deliciously. You know, I'm all about that food. All I got to do is just sign some book. So yeah, things are looking up for me.